truly multimodal model is not something that you would often see and especially something open source with a smaller size it's quite a rare to come by and today we have got a model that is called janus i guess it is janus not janus i'm not sure how do you pronounce it but i'm going to call it janus janus 1.3 billion parameter model it is from deep seek see if you are not familiar with deep seek or quen i i unless until like you have problems with chinese models these are open models truly open models they come with mit license i i think it's time for us to appreciate these models this is an auto regressive model very similar like what you have got with your gpt family of models the llama family of models the only thing it does slightly different is to address the multimodality so to understand the image and also to generate image it is slightly different so in this video we're going to see a little bit about what is janus and then we're going to see a couple of examples first of all if you see janus they have made sure that they have published a paper they have open sourced the github repo and they have also shared the model with us for our, for us to download and then use the model so everything about this model is kind of open source and we can go ahead and then start using it now what is different about this model the main thing that is different about this model is they have decoupled the vision encoding for vision understanding and uh, visual generation so usually if you see gpt4 is a model that can understand so that is vision understanding but if you see dali kind of a model that is about generation so what genesis is doing is it's one model that can do both the things it can understand it can understand language it can understand vision and it can also make generation but they have decoupled the component the visual encoder for both the task so what kind of tasks that they have decoupled it to so you can see that they have decoupled the vision encoder uh, as an understanding encoder and a generation encoder so one it's a visual encoder but it has two components one is an understanding encoder that will understand when an input image is given and there is a generation encoder that is useful if you had to generate an image so it's one single transformer model still but that transformer model has got two encoder so this is a bigger difference that they mention about uh, this particular model if you compare it with other models like chameleon which is from meta ai so after they have done this thing they feel that this surpasses all unified models this is a unified model which can do both the things like google gemini so according to them janus surpasses all previous unified models or matches or exceeds the performance for task specific models if you see the benchmarks you can see that in this size particularly 1.3 billion parameter particularly this size you have got uh, the 7 billion parameter model instruct blip you have got lava 5 you have got a mobile vlm you have got show o so if you compare it with all these models you can see that janus the 1.3 billion parameter model which you can conveniently run on a lot of consumer grade hardware is quite a uh, good so this this means good you can see the purple color is the outermost line so in one case it matches with that the mm perception but in almost every other evaluation this is quite good so this is the mm mu the multimodality version of uh, language mmlu and this is quite good and visual generation creation is also good but let's go ahead and then start using the model so one important thing that you have to notice is this is an mit license model that means you can do anything with the model it's truly open source you can do anything with this model the model is available on hugging faces model hub so you can literally go download the model weights and then start playing with that so uh yeah there is a, there is a demo the demo is uh, you can upload the image and you can say explain this meme so this is a simple image that they gave as part of an example decoupling visual encoding single visual encoder so this meme compares two different types of neural networks used in computer vision uh, decoupling visual encoding and uh, single visual encoder this image uses the shiba inu doc character to visually represent the two approaches um decoupling is on the depict uh, and then it gives you the information the meme uses to make a humorous comparison between the two approaches doesn't give enough uh, information but you know it kind of explains so now let's look at another example which is convert the formula into a latex code so this is a formula and if you were to convert into a latex code which is something that a lot of people do in fact like there is a very powerful product it's called mathpix that does this you can take a screenshot of your um, you know equations and it can convert into a latex code and do the calculation for you as well so sure here is the latex code formula let's take this and go to a latex renderer latex renderer and uh, paste it and see what happens render okay so we have got uh, the equation uh, a0 1 plus 3 5 let's see yep it's the same equation i hope it didn't make any mistake 
4 by 9, it's the same equation. Let's go ahead and then use something more realistic. So one of the reasons you want a multimodal model is not just to use it as a OCR model. See, you have got optical character recognition models where you can upload an image and then ask what is inside the image. OCR images always have done those things. You, you can try to understand what is in it. You can try to understand text in it. But one of the reasons you want multimodal understanding is to do much beyond it. You want to combine the language component and also the image component. So that means you should be able to upload an image and get something valuable out of the text. See, one of the use cases that I always love is uh, for creators like this. So where you can upload a thumbnail and then ask it to write a YouTube description. I mean, it's it's much good, much better if you can upload a video and then ask it to write a YouTube description, timestamp, thumbnail, and all those things. But here I just have uploaded a thumbnail of a recent video called uh, Baby AGI 2.0. And I just said, write a YouTube description for this. I've uh, gone ahead with the smaller uh, temperature. And this is what it wrote. I mean, it doesn't have any internet information about what is uh, Baby AGI, but still it does a pretty good job of, okay, introducing Baby AGI 2.0, a comprehensive guide to AI powered language assistant in this video. So it understood this is a video because I said YouTube description. In this video, I'll be teaching you how to use Baby AGI uh, improvement uh, to your language uh, skills, whether you are a language learner. Okay, okay, okay. It's a language improve. So it doesn't have the knowledge about Baby AGI 2.0. But imagine you're giving something where it has some information. So it's going to be extremely helpful when you were to give this and then ask her to do something. So for example, another thing I can do is write a tweet. Uh, give me a few tweet, few viral tweet examples of this video. This is about a new AI framework for autonomous agent creation. I'm going to intentionally leave that, um, intentionally leave the typo there. So let's see if it can catch that it is autonomous. So again, like I said, you want a multimodal model, you want multimodal understanding. Oh, it just did this. It didn't give me, give me a tweet, bro. Give me a tweet. Give me a tweet. Okay, maybe LinkedIn post, LinkedIn post. Okay, I shouldn't have said example, maybe. Let's see what happens now. This is about a new framework for autonomous agent creation. So one of the things that you want multimodal model is to be able to do what I'm doing right now. Give an image, get something. Yeah. Okay. Um, you can see it's going on repeating mode. That's primarily because the model is small. That is exactly why we have got a parameter called repetition, uh, repetition penalty. You can increase the repetition penalty and this will not happen. Introducing baby AGA 2.0. A new framework for autonomous, <laughs> it, it, it did not say autonomous. That's that's cool. Uh, it stuck with the same title, but here it understood uh, autonomous agent creation. Join us as we delve into the world of autonomous agents, explore the possibilities of using baby AJ. Let's say, give me a tweet now. Meanwhile, I'm going to show you the image generation capability. So just went ahead and then said Master Shifu Raccoon wearing drip attire as a street gangster. This is what we have got. This is, um, Master Shifu wearing drip attire as a street gangster. One thing during my test, I figured out that it is not really good with text rendering. So it doesn't do text well. I mean, of course I shouldn't expect like 1.3 billion parameter model to do text rendering really well, which is even a struggle for a hardcore text image generation models. So you can see that there is some text here, which is not really good. I would go ahead and uh, give this particular one, uh, which is a cute, adorable baby fox with a big brown eyes and a bunch of information. So one thing you can also do is you can upload an image, ask it to create a prompt and then give that thing. Hey everyone, I'm excited to share some news about um, BAGA 2.0, create autonomous agents without coding. So it managed to give me a tweet based on this particular image. And you can always, you know, change the image, play with that. It's quite exciting to see uh, what it can do. So we have got the image here, a cute, adorable baby fox. So the image quality is, uh, to be honest, like it's not like something that you can use it out of the box. So let me say a cute baby adorable fox as a sticker. Let's see. So you would want this kind of model primarily when you, uh, especially for image generation, something that you want to create, not a very high quality, something like a sticker, something like, you know, um, a branding that you want to use, not necessarily like a full fledged high quality flux like picture. I think we'll get there. Uh, definitely not with 1.3 billion parameter model. It's decent. Okay. It's not quite bad. So you've got a bunch of examples. Um, I wouldn't 
I wouldn't say these are great, but I think for 1.3 billion parameter model, ideally I shouldn't complain. It's like me buying an Android phone for a less than $100 and then saying that it doesn't have a optical uh, image stabilization. Um, that is hypocritical. Um, I would stri st st say that this is one of the best multimodal model that you can use at 1.3 billion parameter size. I think this is quite easy for uh, you to run on a lot of consumer grade hardware. Right now I'm testing it on hugging face spaces, but you can download the model weights and then use it. Let me know what you feel about it. But uh, if you think a Google Colab notebook might be helpful, I'm happy to spend some time put together a Google Colab notebook because I guess this should run on a Google Colab notebook. But ideally, we have got a great model thanks to DeepSeekAI again. You should definitely check out the family of DeepSeek models and Quent models. These are quite amazing models with a permissive license. And I'm really happy that these models exist. See you in another video. Happy prompting.